In this tutorial, we'll cover how live tasks work in Burp Suite. We'll show how you can set them up and we'll explain the live tasks that Burp creates by default. Live tasks are used to process traffic from specific Burp tools and perform defined actions on them. Let's see how they work. To create a live task in the Burp Suite dashboard, you click on the new live task button. Here you can define the task type and the options are live audit, which performs a vulnerability scan or live passive crawl, which adds entries to the target sitemap. You can define the tool scope and this means the tools whose traffic will be inspected to select items that are processed by the live task. You can choose proxy, repeater or intruder. So some common use cases might be to use proxy so that you can use your browser to control which requests get sent for a vulnerability scan. So if you want to visit certain application endpoints, certain features, you can audit exactly the requests that result from those. With Repeater, you might create a live task to add everything that you request through Burt Repeater to the target sitemap. Or for Intruder, you might create a live task to scrape all the responses that come through Intruder looking for new URLs. You can configure the URL scope, and this defines which items are processed by the live task based on their URL. So you can configure the task to include everything or to use the suite scope if you've defined one, or you can define a custom scope just for this task. You can also configure whether to deduplicate items that you've seen before based on their URL and parameter names. So for some live tasks, it would be wasteful to repeat the same action again on the same URL and query string. So here you can configure not to do that. Under configuration, you can set other options that are applicable to the live task, and we'll look at those in a minute. And you can also configure the resource pool, which affects how many requests can be made by this task in parallel if you've set that up. The resource pool just works exactly the same as other types of tasks, other scans. So we're going to set up a live audit task. And to do that, I'm going to select traffic through the proxy, and I'm going to define a custom scope for the task. I'm going to turn on deduplication. And under configuration, I'm going to select audit checks medium active. So I'm going to click, click OK to create that task. You can see it appears in the dashboard here. So to see the task in action, I'm going to open Burp's embedded browser and I'm going to visit a URL. I'm just going to turn off interception in the proxy so that all the traffic gets passed through. And now on the dashboard, we can see the number of requests that have been made by this task, and we can see the number of issues that have been reported. And if I browse around some of the URLs, we can see more requests are happening and more issues are being reported. If you click on view details, you can see the full details for this task, just as you can for any scan task. And you can drill right in and see all of the items that have been selected to be audited and you can monitor their progress. So this kind of task is really useful because it lets you use your browser to guide Burp Scanner through parts of an application and just audit the items that you're interested in, just the items that you visit. So now let's look at how live passive crawl works. So this task is used to add items to Burp's target sitemap. So I'm going to select the proxy again, and I'm going to define a custom scope. And in configuration, because this is a passive crawl task, we have some different options. And here we can configure what types of item to add to the sitemap and which URLs to add. So I'm just going to leave those as defaults for now and create that task. So again, we have an entry in the dashboard showing this task for live passive crawl. And to see how this works, again, I'm going to open the browser and visit a URL. And if I forward the traffic, we can now see 
Two responses have been processed and 15 items have been added to the sitemap. If we go to the sitemap, we can see that it's partly populated based on the traffic that was processed through the proxy. The items that are showing in solid white have been requested and all the other items have been inferred from responses passing through the proxy but they haven't yet been requested. If we look at the dashboard for the live passive crawl tasks, we see there are two controls. One is to pause capturing and one is to pause the task itself. So if we pause the task and make some more requests, we can see we now have some responses queued. So these responses have been captured and they're waiting to be processed, but because we paused the task, nothing's happening yet. So if we unpause the task, they get processed in the normal way. If instead we turn capturing off and make some more requests, you'll see we don't get any additional responses queued. So here we can just turn off the capture and here we can turn off the processing of the items that have been captured. When you create a live task, there are some predefined tasks that can be instantly added into the configuration of the wizard for common purposes, which you can use directly or which you can customize further to meet your needs. When BERT first opens in default settings, you'll see that there are two live tasks that are created for you by default. So the first of these is a live passive crawl task, which will add items to the sitemap as you browse. It adds links based on the item itself, any URLs observed on the same domain, or any URLs that are in suite scope. And you also have a live audit task, which just does purely passive audit checks of all traffic. These default live tasks are replacements for features that previously, prior to BERT2, were implemented directly within the scanner tool and the proxy tool. These have now been repurposed as general live tasks, which you can edit and customize further. So that's how live tasks work in BERP Suite, how to set them up, and the live tasks that BERP creates by default.